Thank you, Milos. First, first of all, I'd like to thank all the participants who have made it here today. I'm very encouraged to see so, so many participants here today and keen on discussing a relatively, not relatively, but very important topic here in Kosovo that has been kind of gaining some public traction in recent times. Uh, as you all know, we all have, I guess, been convened here to discuss the constitutional court verdict on the Dechani Monastery and the implication that has on kind of the constitutional order in Kosovo, but also uh, on the multi-ethnic character of our constitution, especially for those of you who might not necessarily be informed. In 2016, the Constitutional Court of Kosovo came out with a verdict that gave exclusive rights to the Dachani Monastery on uh, around 59 acres of land around the monastery that should, by law and constitution, be uh, kind of legally owned by the Dechani Monastery. Since then, we've seen a number of protests by Albanian citizens on Kosovo kind of questioning the legality and legitimacy of the constitutional court verdict. And kind of this discussion is an extension of that. We want to kind of convene Kosovar Serbs and Albanians and also Serbs in Belgrade to kind of discuss and Serbs in Serbia in general to discuss on what what this verdict, but in general, what this means for inter-ethnic cooperation in the region, but also specifically here in Kosovo. I think uh, Kosovo in relation to cultural heritage and rights of the Serbian Orthodox Church has had a long history of kind of imp incremental implementation and legal battles that stem from the Atisari plan, and most notably Annex 5. What Kosovo has done in response to kind of implementing its obligations stemming from the Atisari plan has been kind of advancing its legal framework on commu community rights and especially cultural heritage. Kosovo has two laws currently that uh, kind of regulate the sphere, which is the law on cultural heritage, but also the law on special protective zones. Most recently, the discussion again on the Dechani Monastery gained traction because the former government was planning on initiating construction of a road that will link the, the municipality of Dechan with that of Plav. And kind of, there was a lot of international backlash, especially there were Quint member states who uh, provided a lot of international pressure to the Kosovo government to kind of uh, reschedule, but also redefine the plans for building the bypass road. What has happened that subject to an inter Italian brokered agreement, the government had agreed to stop any sort of planning until a feasibility study was to be conducted, which was facilitated by the EU. But now again, we've seen the discussion coming to light in recent public debates, especially just last night, the prime minister of Kosovo, Alvin Kurti, was in a public discussion regarding political developments in Kosovo, and this came up. And I think there was some vague answers in response to whether the government was planning to implement the constitutional court verdict. And just most recently, the current president of the constitutional court has sent a letter to the chief prosecutor of Kosovo to implement uh, the decision of the court. But since then, nothing has been done in terms of implementation. Um, I would, uh, this was just a bit of background to the issue for anyone who is not necessarily aware of what is happening. I'm happy to be joined here by four renowned panelists on the topic. We have Milica, again, who's been working with NSI on these issues. And Milica is very well aware of the current political developments in Kosovo, but also has provided a lot of perspectives from Kosovo or Serbs in terms of the legal obligations the Kosovo government has had to communities, especially Serbs. We also have, we are joined by Senat Sabovic, who is a political analyst, but who is also very much aware of both sides and has done a lot of analysis, both from, I mean, what these consequences mean for Kosovo Serbs and Kosovo Albanians. And last but not least, we're also joined by the former president of the Constitutional Court, Enver Hassani, who I think uh, his insights will be key here in today's discussion to provide more nuance on the legality of the issue and but also what this means for the constitutional order in Kosovo. So without further ado, I'd first like to pass the floor to Milica for some introductory remarks and a few discussions on her perspectives on the issue. Each panelist will have 15 minutes to discuss some introductory remarks, then we will open the floor up to a Q&A with all the participants who are here today. Thank you, Milica. The floor is yours. 
Thank you, Ardit, and thank you for that uh, generous amount of time you're providing me with, but I'm definitely not going to take 15 minutes. That would be um, too much, especially given uh, that we have a lot more competent speakers than myself. Uh, but what I do want to say about this, I, I want to provide a bit more a background just in order for everyone to understand how um, easy at this point it would be for Kosovo government to implement the decision of the Constitutional Court. So all of this started in, back in 2000 when the two companies from uh, public uh, utility, com public companies, sorry, not public utility, but public companies from uh, Dechany sued monastery for, the, for this land. The land that used to belong to monastery was uh, first nationalized in 45 or 47, but then it was given back to uh, the monastery in 97. Um, and this is, uh, it was given uh, back to the monastery by uh, Milosevic regime, which is one of the most uh, uh, used arguments in Kosovo by those who uh, oppose uh, the verification of this decision. So in 2000, the two public companies uh, sued the monastery uh, and Amnik presented them in this um, in this claim. Uh, this ended with monastery and uh, Amnik uh, striking a deal. Uh, the monastery uh, renounced its claim on all of the um, uh, parcels that what were outside of the special protective zone around the around the monastery in favor of the public companies. Whereas uh, the monastery should have, or actually did get, uh, the uh, ownership rights to the parcels that are found within the special protective zone um, that, is, um, that has special rules on what you can do in them or not, um, according to this agreement. Uh, the agreement was implemented partly. Uh, so the um, uh, ownership of the land for the public companies was immediately included in the cadaster, but not for um, the, the ownership of, of the church. Uh, so the second part of the agreement was not implemented. Uh, then in 2012, the public companies again sued uh, or tried to uh, contest the validity of that agreement. Uh, but ULEX court back then said uh, that the agreement is legal and that it has to be implemented. In 2014, the Supreme Court of Kosovo found the same. And then in 2016, the Constitutional Court of Kosovo found the same. So we have uh, three different decisions. Uh, first, the agreement between uh, public companies presented by Amnik and the monastery. Uh, and then three court decisions saying that the agreement was valid and then this belongs to the monastery and it, ne it needs to be in introduced into the cadaster. One important thing to understand here is that the monastery is using this land. Uh, since the very beginning, they were given the right to use this land uh, until such time uh, the public companies uh, uh, prove that they have the right, and this is a, a usual practice, that they have ownership rights over these, um, these lands. They didn't success in proving this. Uh, on the contrary, as I said, there are three uh, legal decisions saying that the monastery is the legal owner and that they should be introduced into the cadaster. So they are using the land. At this moment, it is not necessary to take away the land from someone and then give it to the monastery because they are already using it. At this point, the implementation of decision literally means just for a person working in the municipality of Dechany in the cadaster to go and record the ownership and say, yes, owners of these and these and these parcels is the Dechany monastery. So this is really not that big of an issue that would somehow upset the uh, economic uh, balance in the Dechany municipality, because as I said, the monastery is already using this land. Uh, so for me, this is one of very uh, difficult to understand issues uh, because at this point, it costs basically, basically very little to Kosovo authorities to implement this decision uh, or actually verdict. Plus it is a 
legal obligation to your own constitutional court. So it is sending a really problematic message that even in cases when uh, a, a third party manages to uh, win over an ownership claim, uh, it can still get contested. There are a lot of issues with uh, ownership claims uh, across Kosovo for both Albanian and Serbian community. Uh, these cases uh, last for decades, even now we have uh, in uh, North Mitrovica, we have uh, apartments that need to be um, uh, vacated by people who are basically usurping them, who are Serbs. The same goes for any other municipality south of Iber, where we have uh, Albanians usurping Serbian property. So, uh, and again, this is lasting decades. And, and even in cases when you have an ownership claim that is resolved, we don't see implementation. It is a uh, an immensely bad uh, message and brings a lot of concern for the Serbian community, all the more so uh, given that this is uh, uh, perceived as an attack on the monastery of Dachini, which, as Ardi said, uh, has other legal issues with Kosovo government trying uh, to uh, break the, the law on special protective zones and create uh, or build a transit road through the special protective zone. Um, this has been uh, negotiated. There will be um, um, a road around the special protective zone, but the issue of implementation of uh, the decision on, on the uh, ownership of the monastery of these 24 acres uh, remains and is a very um, important indicator for Kosovo Serb community on how um, our rights are being treated by uh, Kosovo authorities. Uh, not the judicial system in this particular case, but authorities that are supposed to execute um, the court orders. Thank you very much, Milica, for, for kind of uh, also building upon my introductory remarks. This was a very good overview on what the current state of the discussion on the Deshani Monastery is. I would now kindly like to pass the floor to Mr. Hassani, again, who was the former president of the Constitutional Court in Kosovo. I think it would be nice to get some more additional insights on the legality of the uh, case, but also some more analysis from his view on what this entails for Kosovo. Mr. Hassani, the floor is yours. Thank you. Ardit, it's nice to be with you and joining this issue discussion on this issue, which uh, has been dragging on for several years through several governments, I would say. And uh, I, as far as the legal point is concerned, the issue is clear. Uh, Deshani Monastery, as the lady before me said and explained, reached an agreement and the, the, that proceedings went on for several years and then they reached what is called ju judicial agreement that, has, that replaces court decision, which is valid legally and, re and is recognized by Kosovo legal order in which parties agreed to kind of swamp or in fact, uh, monastery really, uh, you know, released or uh, uh, renounced its rights over certain property downtown Dechani. And then uh, with an understanding that the uh, properties which are now are being object of public debate uh, would belong to the monastery. There are several aspects of this issue. This is legal and uh, as far as, you know, uh, legal matter is concerned, every court decision uh, 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 can be enforced through uh, criminal sanctions and through uh, the use of the force of the state apparatus, which has not happened so far for the reasons which I, I don't think that I know at least and uh, here at this stage are irrelevant for me. Second aspect is constitutional aspect, <coughs> which is the uh, issue uh, of uh, constitutionality of the proceedings. And the court said in its decision that the uh, case was not tainted with constitutional violations, meaning 
that the case is what we say in legal terms, res judicata, meaning it's a decided issue which produces certain legal consequences. And one of them is, and the crucial is that the issue cannot be reopened within Kosovo's legal order. Uh, in the future, if Kosovo becomes a member of the Council of Europe and by default member of the European Court of Human Rights, that issue might be triggered by someone else, but that's again irrelevant because the uh, issue is, uh, is uh, uh, decided with the final decisions, both legal and constitutional. When it comes to the issue of execution, uh, the, in fact, putting the pressure on government and political forces, it may be off the record, but it's not an issue that belongs to them. Uh, what is object of execution? What we say, titulus executioris. What is, uh, uh, we say in Albanian, titul executive is virtually in Oslo, uh, and, uh, or executive title in English would be, it is not the constitutional court decision. When, when, when the court, I, when I was president and now current president does report to the public prosecution office, it does so to alert, to alert a non-execution of a certain decision, which was object of control of constitutionality before it. But this is not coterminous with the executive title. It's, these are two different stories. You know, public prosecution, office of the public prosecutor has to enforce and to see whether there is criminal activity because of the non-enforcement of decisions of regular courts, not constitutional court decisions. You know, constitutional court decision has said that as far as constitution is concerned, the issue is okay. It was decided without no taint, as we say in constitutional, in legal terms, no taint whatsoever uh, with, uh, of the decision or, or the whole proceedings on that matter with constitutional violations, that's it. So uh, the only body that would have a responsibility to go in public and say and urge parties to enforce decision is the head of state, which is president of the Republic. It, is be it belongs to her or to any president in parliamentary assembly or in, uh, in the parliamentary system of governance uh, in the region and beyond it because it is a unifying factor which represents the whole unity of institutions and all citizens of the country. So it is on her to go in public and explain to the people that the issue of the court decisions, especially highest courts, such as constitutional court, within the just justice system, because constitutional court is not a regular court. You know, in some countries, there are criminal sanctions I, I don't remember in Serbia how it works, but I know Russia, Belarus, Albania, some countries. Some other countries, in addition to criminal, they have some body which is a guarantor of the execution of constitutional court decisions. Prime Minister, Council of Ministers, Head of State, for example, Austria and, and some countries. So in this sense, Head of State, President of the Republic in Kosovo should go in public, and make it clear this is, not, this is not good for Kosovo, its image, and its international legal standing. It's not good because it shows that Kosovo uh, as a society is not respecting court decisions, uh, decisions of, of its justice, justice-related uh, justice highest bodies, and uh, uh, that, that doesn't bode well for our European, European path, Euro-Atlantic integration in general, uh, in general terms. Uh, as far as the uh, issue of the, uh, uh, because it's very important that we all say something, then what? What will happen? You know, in my view, in my firm belief, this is good, not good for Kosovo at all. What I will say is very bad for Kosovo, very bad for leadership, very bad for justice system, 
very bad for the head of state, very bad for the head of government and everyone. This issue and other uh, religious related issues, which uh, are supposed to be non-political. When a constitutional review of laws on the status of church, uh, serving church and property and uh, its uh, legal standing with, with the Kosovo legal order were reviewed. I was president of the court and I remember well uh, the case that was the case of the road, which was bypassing now uh, that, uh, that uh, property, which is affected by that law of the church. Uh, this shows that in, in the final agreement, and I see no other solution, it's buck passing, as in, in English they say, it's buck passing among constitutional organs of the state. Everybody is avoiding that, you know, trying to politicize and to put the blame on the other and the like. So using it for daily political purposes, which this is, which is bad. So that's, but that mean that the only uh, solution to me is at, as it was done with Washington agreement, but in the final agreement, comprehensive agreement with Serbia issue of the, uh, because all is there in legal and constitutional terms. All it has to, to uh, done is to put some effective guarantees that the parties will not obstruct and some uh, Kosovo-wide uh, body kind of arbitration or something that will decide cases uh, of interpretation in the future over, over, over the issue of this legal and constitutional status of the uh, church, Orthodox Church, of Serbian Orthodox Church and its property. So I see no, in my view, I see no other, I see no other, other, uh, other way uh, that, 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 you know, criminal sanctions and indicting people who are not uh, enforcing the orders would be one, one of the options, but that would not heal, heal the wounds and disagreements that local population has, has there. So uh, this is political issues, not legal issue. But this is not bad. The way it is, is not bad, but I, 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 uh, uh, I, I said my views on how this can be sold out, sorted out uh, uh, to the benefit of the dignity of the Orthodox Church, Serbian Orthodox Church in Kosovo. This is all what I would say for now, and I'm open uh, to questions and comments in, in, in the, during the call. <clears throat> well, I think... Thank you very much, Mr. Hassani, for the very insightful kind of arguments on the issue. I think this will also be, again, reopened during the course of the discussion, because I would hope that a lot of people have some significant questions on this idea. But also, thank you very much for the legal analysis and the legal explanation of what the court decision means for the implementation, but also prospects on future implementation. I will now like to pass the floor on to Senad, and I think Senad will be very fit to talk about kind of the social political consequences of what this means here in Kosovo, but especially kind of Albanian public perceptions on the court decision and how and why there were protests against it specifically. Senad, the floor is yours. Thank you, yes. Thank you, Adit. Uh, welcome uh, greeting to the other panelists and to all who are listening. Happy to be here, and exactly, I... Uh, was told to think about the socio-political underpinnings uh, in, in Kosovo, especially among the Kosovo Albanian community locally and in general, that are relevant to the non-implementation of the constitutional court decision on the 24 hectares. Uh, so what are the key points of public perceptions uh, that work against uh, court decision implementation? So just want to say before we go into it that, you know, that, that my presentation, my, my address here will be exactly that try to analyze and relate the existing opinions rather than to express my own, my own reason. So what's, what is the problem? What is standing in the way of, of, of inflation in terms of the socio-political uh, circumstances on the ground? Um, I don't think uh, that, that we can point to one particular uh, reason, one particular factor, and it is rather a combination of factors uh, uh, that some of which are more general and some are more particular. I mean, I'll start with the most, the, the overall context and, and, and delve on it very, very little because I don't think I'll say anything new there. Uh, it's 
it's you know the context is the general rift, the legacy of the of the of the war and the effects on uh, Albanian Serb relations. Uh, here, it's important to understand that uh, the, the the monastery belongs to the Serbian Orthodox Church, and, and that's just the essence. The Serbian Orthodox Church is seen among uh, the majority population here in Kosovo among the Albanians as it is fully associated with with Serbia and Serbian nation. So most of the prevailing feelings that have to do with Serbia and, and, and Serbs among the Albanians are projected onto the Serbian Orthodox Church. That's the overall context uh, that, that shapes relations between the, the, the community and the, and the church, including the monastery. Uh, in this context, making concessions, uh, producing a significant benefit to the church is kind of automatically not popular. Uh, and it's not only to do with the, uh, with the history with a, with a conflict legacy, it's also the notion is also fueled by unregulated relations between Kosovo and Serbia. Uh, the, the, the fact that Kosovo's international standing is hampered by uh, Serbia's diplomatic activity. So it's, it's, it's an issue that is being fueled by, the, by a very present and ongoing dispute between Kosovo and Serbia, where again, the Serbian Orthodox Church is seen as an integral element of, of Serbia and Serbia. Uh, under the overall context, there are a few particularities. I think one important one is the fact that, uh, I think Milica mentioned that the 24 hectares of land were, award, were originally, were awarded uh, to the municipality uh, during the Milosevic era. And uh, it, that by default is seen by the majority population as profoundly unjust. Yes, the land was not simply given to the monastery, but I'm, I'm talking about the general perception here. It was reinstated after to the monastery after it had been nationalized by Yugoslavia, but the distinction makes little difference. It does not make a significant difference for the uh, uh, public majority public perceptions, and that's probably, uh, and including some that have been stated for several reasons. I mean, other than the well-known fact that the Milosevic era is, is is widely known for its discriminatory policies and uh, based on exclusion of the Albanian community from political life. Uh, so all decision taken at that time are by, by default taken is un, unfair. Then some will point out how reinstatement of formerly nationalist property was not a general policy. It was not happening under some sort of uh, due democratic uh, course, uh, which, would, which would have affected everybody who was in that position. Uh, we can imagine how numerous Albanian families, mosques or related interests uh, had properly nationalized, but they were not subject to the uh, reinstatement uh, policy, as far as it is <laughs> widely, widely known. And in this framework, I think there's also a, a, another complicating factor, which is, I would say, a stark contrast bef between the original, let's say, usage and destination of the land during Yugoslavia after nationalization and uh, the, the, the destination that is given to it by the Constitutional Court decision, uh, quite simply, uh, while it was used by the two local socially owned enterprises, we can uh, imagine that the most in practical benefit, practical terms, most of the benefits uh, went to the local Kosovo Albanian community, who again, we can imagine were among the uh, majority in the enterprises, uh, labor force and management. The you know, court decision in current possession uh, is contrary, <laughs> contrary to that logic and assigns any theoretical or current benefits to the, to the monastery. So that's that's another, I guess, frustrating contributing factor standing in the way of of, of uh, you know institutions making a move to to implement the decision. Uh, the, perhaps uh, the single biggest challenge is uh, in the context of the dynamic of relations uh, between the municipality of Dechan and its population on one hand and the monastery on the other. Over the post four years. Um, this dynamic has been quite negatively shaped by numerous points, by numerous uh, moments, uh, numerous points of disagreement, numerous uh, moments uh, of the extended court process related to the 24 hectares, but also several uh, others, other points of disagreement. It's almost every step of the way, the original rift uh, uh, between the local population and the mon monastery uh, grew uh, to the point of the current, I think, deep entrenchment of opposing position. Um, it, it, this entrenchment clouds the judgment to a significant degree. It prevents direct, cool-headed uh, dialogue and solutions. 
and has created a particular feature of the of the context, which is a sort of a, a, a automatically expected uh, political imperative uh, among the population. So the mayors and mayoral candidates, on one hand, are expected are kind of expected to have a position uh, against the monastery's interest. Um, and on the other hand, no mayor, for example, as a community, as a kind of the, the central community, community leader uh, and institutional leader on the ground, uh, wishes to be the one on whose watch the land was confirmed through a cadastral registration as monastery property. So I think, again, in the midst of all factors, this is probably this entrenchment and this political expectation are probably the single most important, important factor. There's also the dimension of the uh, political Party Alliance for the Future of Kosovo, or AAK, uh, which is a strong political force in, in Western Kosovo, in particular in its home base in Dechan. Uh, so issues related to the Visuki Dechani Monastery are closest to the AAK among all the uh, Kosovo Albanian political parties. Uh, here, this dimension of this expected political imperative, imperative from the local population is important. And uh, AAK is a party that wishes to maintain uh, its, its, its popularity in the region and, and its stronghold in Dechani feels obliged to follow and fulfill this expected uh, course of action from the local population. The other dimension is that the, this party, which has again is closest to the, to the monastery issues, has been at the forefront of other key political processes in recent years. And most notably, this is the uh, issue of demarcation with Montenegro, which uh, in 2000, starting from 2015, and the 100% tax on Serbian products in 2018. These issues, I believe, have consumed uh, a lot of the focus and energy of the, of the party, both as an opposition uh, or governmental actor, and have left uh, limited space for movement on other complex issues. And if that wasn't enough, uh, the frequent uh, election cycles in recent years have further contributed to, uh, you know, have further consumed energy and contributed to a sort of no 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 compromise uh, type of uh, attitude or, or no concession type of type of attitude. Uh, there are two other, uh, perhaps uh, lesser secondary, but certainly contributing factors. I would say that this notion of extraterritoriality uh, for certain Serbian Orthodox Church sites in Kosovo is, is there. I mean, this is not something that's anywhere officially on the table, but it is a notion that has been mentioned in media and public discourse in, in recent years. Many, I think, in the Kosovo Albanian community fear that this will be the course of the uh, negotiations. They fear that this will be the next concession that Kosovo will have to make. So that's something in the back of their mind. And uh, then the logic would be that if this land is confirmed uh, as property of, is legally confirmed as property of the, of the monastery, that just means that there might be a bigger chunk of land to be subject to a future possible extraterritoriality arrangement. Again, this is very speculative and <laughs> thus, uh, but it is something that appears in public discourse and therefore shapes public opinion thinking on the, on the matter. And finally, uh, another factor I think in this category, perhaps even lesser is this notion of creating a precedent, uh, a precedent for similar situations, pri primarily related to uh, certain Orthodox church sites, but also maybe, maybe other. So confirming this land as a monastery uh, property, uh, especially on what is seen as uh, on the basis of a Milosevic era decision, would is feared to create this precedent that can be used by in favor of the church uh, regarding other sites that may have similar similar circumstances. This most obvious connection there is the uh, unfinished uh, uh, church in in Pristina within the university complex. Uh, whose legal situation, at least for a non-legal person, which includes the general public, is seems to bear some re resemblance to the to the one to the Vizkidechni case. So they, these, I think, are the you know the the, the, the key groups groups of factors that are uh, 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 kind of fueling the social political context uh, that would be uh, standing in the way of full implementation. Thank you. All right, Sanat, I'd like to thank you very much for a very, I think, comprehensive overview of, again, Albanian perceptions on the issue. Some, again, I think, uh, 
fall prey to public discourse in general, but again, I think uh, it is shared among the majority population here in Kosovo, and I think it, we should try to look deeper on those issues, but also have a more honest discussion among both Kosovo Serbs and Albanians on what the implications of those perceptions are on the ground. <clears throat> I would now like to open the floor up to all the attendees who are here today. Uh, I think we had a great opportunity to get some introductory remarks from all the panelists, but they also provide some very good insights on uh, what can be said. But prior to that, I would firstly like to pass the floor to Dushan, who is the Executive Director of the Center for Social Dialogue and Regional Initiatives. Dushan, please go ahead. Uh, thank you, Ardit, and thank to, thanks to, to all the participants uh, for this very, very insightful uh, presentations and that, that really meant a lot for me, I guess, for, for all the participants to, for the, the attendees to, to hear uh, in-depth analysis about, about the, the Visoki Dechani uh, case. Uh, before we go to, to uh, the question of the attendees, I had, I would like to misuse this opportunity to, to ask one particular question that, that, in, that, that that's, you know, bothering me or that that's something that I would like to know as, as a kind of like assessment of, of our um, uh, participants, maybe one of them, maybe one of them can 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 answer on this question. But but uh, you know, we 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 heard about you know the legal situation of of this case. We heard about the political and so social perception of this case uh, in, in Kosovo society, which is really important uh, for us from Belgrade uh, to to know more of. Uh, but I would like to to hear about your assessment. Maybe Senator or Mr. Hassani can can answer this. Uh, about the potential political loss of current political leaders, for, for example, of uh, uh, in Kosovo, or maybe some some other political leaders who are currently in the position, potentially. Uh, about your assessment, is the political loss of political uh, support standing behind the, the, the the, the, the legal decision of constitutional court, as Mr. Hassani said, would the political loss be so um, high for them? And is it possible that they will that they would push for for that kind of political support, maybe this current government or next government, until the the the, the, the final agreement is made with Serbia, and then try to sell this as a kind of concession for the for the things that they could get from the other side from from Serbia in that final agreement is that the, is is the your assessment of that political loss so great so big that they they, they will not be um, they don't want to touch in that issue uh, until they have to uh, uh, because you know the, the assessment of political loss for, from their side is basically as i understand the only thing that that is um, standing between their uh, potential decision and uh, uh, and actually do, do doing something that, like that. Thank you. I mean, uh, Mr. Hassani or Sanad, who would like to go first? I mean, whoever has, I mean, it's up to you. I'll, I'll, I'll let Professor speak first. If he has an answer, then I'm happy to, to answer it. No, in fact, the uh, uh, he, he was making a question but answering at the same time. I think he's right in his assessment. So I have nothing to add. That's, that's correct. I mean, that's correct view. I, I'm, I was sorry, uh, sorry, sorry for interrupting. Is their perception of political loss correct? So, uh, so uh, do you think that they will lose a lot if they oh, do? Oh, yeah. That now? Sure, sure. Oh, yeah. So, so that, that, that you, you agree that's, with, that's the with them? That, in that no, case. But that's, the, that's the reason. That's the reason. But, uh, but this is not an issue that uh, political forces should uh, push. Because it's issue of, of law, enforcing regular court decision. Full stop. Politician, I mean, government. Why, why, why should when it is written in your constitution or, or in any constitution uh, in the region that uh, government should enforce uh, court decisions? You know, it's uh, or constitutional court decisions. Apart from very few countries that have as a guarantor government or some body. The only authority, public authority in Kosovo that has to go up in public is president of the Republic should go, she should go up and explain because that's her role to represent unity of the uh, Kosovo institutions and its citizens, all. So that's why she should say something. And uh, because she, she is not dependent on votes. 
you know, at the end of the day. The rest is the issue of enforcing court decisions, you know, regular court decisions, public prosecution, and the like. So as far as political aspect is concerned, I see no other way than through general or comprehensive agreement to, to settle the, this issue and all pending issues, which have to do with the, uh, with the uh, position of the uh, Orthodox, Serbian Orthodox Church in Kosovo. Uh, if there's can time, I, I, can, I can add a few minutes. So yeah, I mean, no, the political no, loss is a, a, a bit of a relative concept, difficult, difficult to assess. Now, the short answer would be that there's a, there's a whole new uh, political movement that was created in, in February with, with Vendosia, previously, you know, the kind of out, out of institutions party uh, uh, came, came to power and, and got quite sweeping support for it. So uh, what I said is, so everybody else, the political loss of taking up this issue and arguing the constitutionality would be probably too, too great. Uh, nobody else, most notably AAK, would not be strong enough to flip its position on, on this issue. Now, then, therefore, the question is, uh, all the more because they won quite overwhelmingly in, 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 in February, whether a political loss for the dossier would be so great that they shouldn't touch it. And that, again, the more, I mean, if I was them, because of the huge constitutional issue and reputational issue for Kosovo, I would be thinking about it. Uh, and I would be actually measuring through a survey, probably uh, some sort of, you know, to the extent of political loss. But my guess would be that this is a party that could overcome the political loss, that this wouldn't be a breaking political loss for them uh, because of their general popularity, because of their strong rule of law and constitutionality arguments, because uh, because they're just generally more trusted, which includes that even when they say, you know, let's make a concession, the people believe them more that that concession, concession is needed. <laughs> that's, 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 that's the logic there. Uh, so my guess without methodological research would be that that loss would be uh, you know, ab absorbed. Uh, they might be waiting to show to the people the, the, the general reform agenda to do a few, you know, things on, on, on that side and then take on some less less popular things or it might be just waiting for the Brussels dialogue, dialogue to, to take it up. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sanat, but also thank you, Dusan, for a very interesting question. Again, now I would like to open the floor for all the rest of the participants who are here today. I encourage you to pose any and all questions whom, that may be relevant to this discussion, but this is also a good opportunity to get more insight, but also perspectives on the issue from Albanians in Kosovo as well. Uh, I don't know if there are any specific questions as of now, I'm checking. Uh, there, do not seem to be any questions as of now. However, I mean, I have some follow-up questions that I have to the participants, but especially Milica, I'd like to get her engaged one more time. And I think prior to this, uh, I have also engaged with NSI in numerous discussions. NSI organizes discussions among Kosovo Albanians and Serbs on a number of kind of sensitive political issues in Kosovo. We've also covered cultural heritage, but also community rights, especially Serb rights in Kosovo. And it seems that the majority of these issues are somehow intertwined in the sense that they always lead to the same root cause and root problems. I would uh, like to ask a specific question to Milica, and that is, uh, what would the implementation of this constitutional court decision mean for the Serbian population in Kosovo, in the sense do you see this as a confidence building uh, measure and how would this be reflected, but also what would this specifically mean for Serb perspectives on the ground? Yes, it will mean a lot for the credibility of Kosovo institutions vis-a-vis -vis Kosovo sub-community. At this point, the message that we're getting is that everything in Kosovo, every right that we're giving in Kosovo is conditioned. Only yesterday we heard the president of the assembly, Glauk Njufca, say how he reviewed the documents related to this decision and that he feels that the the, the um, people who were involved in the panels who judges <laughs> did not consider uh, in the right way the political and social circumstances of the decision that they've made so for him there are no legal um, uh, 
issues with the decision, but they feel, but he feels that this context should have been taken into account when making a decision. So basically, we are told that okay, yes, Kosovo sub community in this particular case, Serbian Orthodox Church is giving some rights, but these rights will be exercised or they will be equal uh, according before the law only when certain sins from the past are taken into consideration. Uh, the same goes for Dragica Gašić. She has the right to return as any other Serb, but she gets public invitations to apologize for Serbian crimes in Kosovo. Again, the woman did not do crimes. She not She's not herself a war criminal, but she is expected to say, I'm sorry. Uh, Serbian journalists, when they ask Albin Kurti anything, whatever it is, he will usually come back with a, oh, does that mean that you recognize Kosovo as a state? So we are expected to either apologize or say we recognize Kosovo or um, uh, have in mind that because we are part of a community that did some uh, sins in the past, we can be expected to have our rights um, suspended or freely interpreted uh, because again, we have this balance from the past. This is currently the, 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 the message that we're getting. Uh, uh, that we are going to be used, we are already used as a tool by the Serbian government in the negotiation process, but here it's uh, clear uh, from what we heard of, of, of the analysis of Mr. Hassani and, and Sanad that this also might, this particular decision might also be used as a political chip in the negotiations, uh, in the dialogue, even though the, the deal was struck even before the dialogue started. So it's really, uh, it's a bad message. It's uh, very difficult to expect that the continuation of integration of Kosovo subcommittee, if it happens even at this point, under these conditions would be uh, successful. And then on the other side, we uh, as a community within Kosovo get accused of trying to um, um, stop integration or being in general reserved about this process. When things like these um, are happening uh, and they, that are very, uh, very discouraging. Um, some of the, the issues that started happening, I guess, uh, come out of the lack of information uh, in the Albanian majority about all of the facts of the case. It is similar, Senad mentioned it, and since he did, then I can add up on that. It is a similar situation with the, with the Church of Christ Savior in Pristina. At this point, there are again two decisions saying, so actually three, the first decision of the Basic Court of Midrits and then the Appellate Court decision, and then the second decision of the Basic Court of Midrits, so just maybe a month or two ago. Uh, again, so uh, all three are basically denying the University of Pristina uh, charges against the Serbian Orthodox Church and um, uh, pretty much saying that the university did not come up with evidence for the, their claim over the, the property of the, over the land on time. So uh, the Serbian Orthodox Church at this moment has the right to use this property. In Kosovo, there is not enough uh, understanding of the fact that the, the, the church at this point can use the property until uh, such time that the University of Pristina manages to prove that this belongs uh, to them. This means that the Serbian Orthodox Church can organize uh, um, uh, processions in the church whenever they want, they can uh, use basically this space in whichever way they want. But then when, we, when, when they do this, when they celebrate the particular saint that the, the church is um, uh, dedicated to through liturgy, we have a public up, outcry in Kosovo and claims that this is a provocation, even though there is the, this decision of the court, of the local Kosovo court saying that the church has a right uh, to use it. And to build on that, we have a public discussion in Kosovo on whether to tear down the church or turn it into a university. And both are at this point, fake choices. They don't exist because at this point, the church is still the owner or actually has the right to use it. 
So in case that we have a similar situation that in the end, the UP doesn't, University of Krishna doesn't prove their right over the land and that it does remain in the, in the uh, ownership of the church, we will again have the situation where Kosovo public will feel like they were denied something or that something was taken away from them because this fake public discussion about whether to turn it into a museum or into a church was pretty much um, supported by the lack of the basic information that the church currently has the right uh, to use it. So it's really, uh, it's not promising. We are not communicating, uh, not Kosovo Serbs, Kosovo government, but in general, Kosovo Serbs, Kosovo Albanians. Uh, we live parallel uh, realities with different facts that are presented to us. And they are very polarizing. Uh, and in, uh, unfortunately, in every problem, uh, we are finding for a winner and a loser or waiting for a winner and a loser to be uh, clear. And it's just not, it's, it's not good. It's not sustainable. Uh, it is not going to lead us to societal peace. Um, and honestly, I'm very um, concerned about the future of the community, uh, Serbian community in Kosovo. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Hassan, you can go ahead, please. Yeah, I will I will uh, say a few things on the issue of the Church of the Savior uh, or the church within the University of Campus. I, I think it's totally wrong what both Senad and the lady uh, say about that. It's not true that any court has recognized uh, legal court uh, in Kosovo the way they say. And the differences in legal terms are huge. First, uh, Dechani Monastery and the general uh, uh, status of the Serbian Orthodox Church objects which belong to the UNESCO or medieval time and the like. Uh, I mean, no one normal would uh, contest that issue. The return of the property uh, to the monastery was done according to the rules which were those years in time of ch and the uh, Serbian uh, government or the Serbian state was sovereign in international law terms to uh, do that issue as far as that property, which was, let's, let's say, it was socially owned, but even if it were pro private property, the government could have done it the way they did because the status of property was not for general public use, such as park or whatever public spaces, as we call it. When, because in, in the case of the university campus church, it is applied what we say intertemporal law. Intertemporal law was law which was enacted by Serbian government uh, uh, applying in extraordinary circumstances in Kosovo. And then as you know, we, had, uh, we have an obligation through the Atisari plan. And there is a list of clear list of churches and all objects which are internationally protected and the Kosovo has an international obligation, which include Monastery of Dechani and the, I, not to mention the whole the rest. This university campus is not there for the simple reason because it was enacted against those laws because neither then in Serbia, nor now in Serbia, nor in any country in Europe, you can change, you can change the status of public property for religious and other purposes without consent of local population and what we say local, what is uh, even then local uh, referenda that applied to that, uh, to that case. Uh, the court, which was uh, uh, without Albanians then, said that the university, a rector of the university, parallel university, was not an authorized party. And the argument of the church was that Albanians never raised the issue. It's not true. There is in the court files, the letter from late rector Statovsi, Baram Kelimani, who was killed, as we all know, with his sons, he represented the case, but it was denied passive uh, active legitimacy of the Albanian population. We deal here with, here with the ch because the property of the university and why it is discriminatory, why Serbian government did not restore Catholic church property or the Islamic community, which was exactly within the same space, for example, Catholic Church wa was Catholic, one of the oldest in the Balkans, where we now have uh, Zaire Pajaziti statue, 
uh, approximately there it was. Or synagogue was, where is the, uh, where is the uh, assembly on the right-hand side, which would come eastern side of uh, uh, over there, which with papers belongs to the Orthodox. It's part of uh, that, that property, which was allegedly given to the Orthodox. I think my advice would be that, and, and besides the case is pending and the, court, the, and the judge who decides it is, is served. I don't think the Serbs is in the interest of the community, Serb community in Kosovo or anyone else at this stage to equalize, to say that they are equal with the monastery of Dachan. Totally different. That case, this case, which is in the, in the, in the uh, university campus, I would say that it's better that it's done or decided through political means, arbitration, you know, some kind of media, because that's legally clear it's it's been done against the law serbian law of that time no part of serbia as a state then public state or public ownership could have been transferred including in kosovo uh, based on that law on extraordinary circumstances without the consent of local population full stop and that's against the constitution of serbia of 99 Jabja constitution uh, again, and, and uh, all uh, legal enactments that were in force of, of that time. This is an utterly different story from, from Dechani Monastery and the laws that protect Serb property, both laws uh, uh, that protect Serbian church property uh, within the territory of Kosovo. I don't think that, because it's not in the list, it's very simple. And it is not in the list, I'm not saying I'm not saying, I'm not speaking about where it is political church or whatever, because every church on earth, every synagogue on earth, every mosque, Al-Aqsa, uh, Holy Sepulchre, you know, uh, Aya Sofia, you know, uh, Haram Svetok Save, everything is political. Where, where we see the origins, because Constantine the Great, when he changed into Christianity, sent his mother, St. Helene, to build and to find the, the, the grave, the last grave of Jesus, you know. And I'm not saying that. I'm not absolutely a church. Our Catholic church is political, by the way, which is downtown. It's a different story. But I'm, what I'm saying is, is that they should not be equalized in legal and constitutional terms. Just to clarify, mm -hmm. I meant that they are similar in terms that at this point, until because the University of Pristina sued uh, the Serbian Orthodox Church twice, uh, once in 2015, uh, then the appellate court, basic uh, court of Pristina, decided on it on in, uh, no, in no, 2015. That's, that's... 2000, uh, no, my point is that uh, the University of Pristina was so far twice uh, unsuccessful in suing the no, uh, university. No, no, no. no, they withdraw from the process. There are no yeah. merits. There are yes. no merits. That's yes, and, that's and, and, yes, and until until the case is decided. You correct me if I'm wrong, but until the case is decided, the Serbian Orthodox Church has the right to use the property or not. Look, look. I, for me, for me, it, it is absolutely uncivilized to say, to bomb, to destroy, because I believe every church, as I said, every mosque on earth, every uh, synagogue on earth, every uh, temple, religious temple on earth, is at the, its root, is is political. I would never think at the slightest of imagination to turn it into a whatever, as they say in public, you know, uh, art, whatever, you know, that's different story. Using it is absolutely different story. You know, uh, it's legitimate, but uh, triggering the issue, raising the issue of property and finishing the church. And now it, with those, through those means, I think that should be decided through kind of arbitration or whatever, not through legal means, because I'm sure through legal means is the way I say. Law and constitution of Serbia in the 90s said that all citizens of Kosovo, Milosevic in paper was not bad in paper. Kosovo, uh, Serbian constitution was okay. We had the rights, human rights and all that. One of them was the right to public, uh, to public parks and, parks and spaces and the like. Three, always those uh, spaces when they change the destination, it cannot be done without the voice of the local 
uh, population, even under extraordinary circumstances, as the law was then in force uh, uh, in the territory of Kosovo. Using it is a different story. Using it, I, I fully mean, understand what you're saying, but it, th this is what I also try. I'm trying to say, as it's uh, dangerous, it's not a good political uh, moment to start up the discussion on uh, renovating or finishing it. Not until this or equalizing it or equalizing with with. Uh, with I'm, Monastery. I wasn't. I was just saying that it was very similar in terms of uh, that the majority population is forming their uh, opinions based on the lack of right information about it. And this is why I said the liturgy last year, the liturgy is going probably to take place uh, next year as well. The liturgy from 2019 in, on, uh, on Christmas correct. as That's well. Correct caused a lot of uh, uh, discontent in Kosovo Albanian majority uh, because they didn't understand that the church has the right to use it. So th this is just my- uh, they have this legal, You were speaking about legal title. I'm not denying I'm, the issue of uh, using for religious purposes. That's absolutely- okay. Then we be, understood uh, uncivilized. And, and it is uncivilized. Look, histories of both nations, to be honest, I will tell you just, Two examples, uh, Serbs throughout history, they believe uh, that Kosovo is cradle of everything for Serbia, okay? Meaning that we are here uh, from Asia, some, somewhere coming with the Turks and the like. Albanians in, in books, in many, many books, ordinary historians and Albanians, they believe that these churches in Kosovo, including Desani Monastery and everything, were not built by by King Milutin and other Serbian uh, medieval dignitaries, but those were Albanian churches, Orthodox churches turned into Serbian. They believe it. And when the people believe stupid things, they then make troubles problems. That's why it's very important to find always ways which people have agreed in Atisari plan, for example, we have agreed that we have obligations towards religious uh, communities list it's clear list there. Uh, then we have a uh, uh, special chap chapter for non Albanian or, or minority communities, which, are, which include Albanians in the north and the like. So that's to stick to the uh, obligations uh, as Europe has, you know, Europe would have never come to the point had, uh, had they not separated religion from politics in the peace of Westphalia. You know, we should separate those things and say, look, this is your church, you can do it uh, on all liturgy because that's the basic human rights and basic thing. But legal title and the, and the like, just don't mix it with that because you make troubles. You know, legal title in Deshani Monastery is absolutely clear. As it is clear for me, the general status, because look, when the issue of Montenegro church uh, emerged two years ago, I was asked in public and I shared with uh, Kosovo, whether this can happen in Kosovo. It cannot happen in Kosovo because uh, Kosovo church has not separated from Serbian church. You know, it's two, totally two different stories. And uh, there is no Kosovo church, Orthodox church that would be part of our identity and the like. So these are utterly different. So that's why it should remain the way it was always throughout the centuries, separated from, uh, from, uh, from uh, politics, Daily politics, property is property, the right to property is sacred for everyone, not only uh, individuals, but churches, you know, uh, other, uh, what we say, moral uh, persons. And that's correct. That's, uh, and everybody has the right to preach their own religion in the or, uh, objects they, they say, for example, uh, 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 that there is within the saint. Uh, uh, Savior, Savior, Savior Pentocrat, what uh, full name I don't remember. Uh, sorry for my. Yeah, yeah, so, Christ is Savior or Pentocrat. Yeah, sure. oh, yeah, it's absolutely legitimate. What is not legitimate is uh, to uh, politicize legal titles, to mix them, because then, uh, then you get nowhere, in my view. All right, thank you again, Mr. Hassani and Milica. I don't think there are any questions from the panelists, but I would like to ask one more last question and then we will close it off with them, some, some closing remarks by Dushan. And I think this question is specifically geared to Mr. Hassani again, and it relates to the idea that 
uh, I, if I'm not correct, it was either Milica or Senat who talked about that, about uh, Mr. Konyusa's remarks about the political context and insensitivity by which the constitutional court judgment was uh, was invoked. So uh, I would kindly ask Mr. Enver Hassani to just briefly comment on that and how does he review kind of political statements around that in the sense of insensitive political context and insensitivity of the constitutional court uh, judgment. Look, uh, but I, I didn't listen uh, live, but I read the, 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 the stuff. Uh, that's absolutely unacceptable. Absolutely unacceptable. There are several reasons which are not political. First, separation of powers. You want to go to your Atlantic legal community? You cannot go with that. Not only this time, but whenever the court rules on a sensitive issue, for example, war crimes or whatever, assembly has nothing to do with it and go and, and, and make you know political orgies over issues that are clearly settled through constitutional law. That's absolutely wrong. It sends a very bad message for Kosovo and um, our, our uh, uh, Euro-Atlantic uh, part. It's absolutely uh, unacceptable. And that should stop. Because even if you want to discuss those arguments, you can discuss, you know, civil society. We can discuss some of us, for example, whether this is this or that. But when you are official, in official position, you cannot do that because he represents all communities of Kosovo, all. Thank you, Mr. Hassani. I think we have one last question by Anna, but she said that she would pose the question in Serbian on the chat and Milica could perhaps. Yes, and until her. she writes, I also want to ask Mr. Hassani uh, if it, under any circumstances, it is possible to review the later, the, the constitutional court decision. You said at one point that it's a, a done deal legally, but for example, could it be? that uh, it's found that a judge involved in the making of the decision was corrupt or involved in some legal uh, illegal activities and based on that, uh, send it for review. Does it even exist as a hypothetical uh, possibility? Or a legal precedence. Yeah. No, no, no. That, that issue is closed. Even if it's a general in most Western countries, even if a decision was extracted through corruption. Let's imagine, hypothetically, theoretically, the decision where we have collective body deciding is irreversible. That's done. The only is when we become part of Council of Europe, you know, it can be reviewed, but that changes nothing. Decision should be implemented. It's final. If Europe says in the future, that's a different story. That's just theory. Okay, thank you, Mr. Aswani. Milica, if you could translate the question that was sent in chat, and then we can have the panelists discuss that final question, and then we will move towards concluding remarks. We'll just give Milica a second to read through the question. Anna is asking uh, whether it's contradictory uh, for Kosovo authorities to con uh, to uh, contest the decision of the, its constitutional court, uh, uh, given the fact that it streams towards uh, in independence, and especially if uh, we take into consideration the principle uh, that uh, there has to be a greater cooperation between Serbs and Albanians in Kosovo in order to reach uh, a compromise solution. So she's basically saying, is it um, normal for Kosovo uh, politicians to contest the um, uh, decision of the, the court that is basically uh, safeguarding its uh, independence? Mr. Hassani, do you want to potentially weigh in on this? Look, this is, this I said, it's, it's very bad. It's compromising. Statehood is compromising because this is not serious. No serious state would behave the way, you know. We are handicapped, as we know, because we are not fully recognized by the whole international community. We want to be, we are in limbo. We want to be full member 
with the equal rights of the international community. And, and one of the one of the criteria for becoming a full member is fulfilling your international obligations. And one of our international obligations is throughout the study plan, which we undertook is to respect to religious tolerance and the Serbian Orthodox Church and its property. This is it. All right, thank you very much for the question, Mr. Uh, for the answer, Mr. Hassani. I hope, Anna, that answers your question. Uh, okay, well, I think we have... Okay, so we have another question, actually, it is by Slovodan, and he has asked, and this will be the last question we will entertain, I think. Is there going to be some connection with the Chani Monastery and all the other property issues that exist in Kosovo? Basically, if the verdict in this case isn't properly implemented, and what should ordinary people expect? No, well, these are two. Uh, church religious property is different story from uh, private property. And then again, uh, uh, there has been some, you know, uh, international bodies, semi-judicial, that have dealt with the issue of property of the, you know, uh, Kosovans. But I think at the end, uh, in the comprehensive agreement, there should be a special chapter, property issues, and it will be, I'm sure. And the claims commission and something which, because now, 20 years after, everybody knows where his or her property is. And, every, and uh, it's known clearly because there is a screening of the situation the last 20 years. And it's clear the situation. So all we have to do is to implement uh, to swamp properties and to, to bring back properties to owners. You know, there are in fact court decisions, including one, what we say, Draj Arsic case. I remember when I was president, uh, he won the case and uh, it was not implemented. All this has to be part of the general agreement. Thank you, Mr. Hassani, rightfully so. Again, I mean, before we in embark on the concluding remarks, I would first like to thank the panelists who are here today, especially Mr. Hassani, uh, Senad, but also Milica. We would like to thank you for your insights. And I, I think the discussion was very thought provoking, but I also hope that it has given the, uh, the CERB participants an opportunity to be exposed to some of the more sensitive discussions that happen here in Kosovo, but also kind of legal consequences, but also social political consequences on the ground. I would now kindly like to pass the floor to Dushan for closing remarks. Dushan, the floor is yours. Thank you, Ardita. Thank, thanks to all the, the panelists. This was a very, 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 very insightful discussion. And I'm really glad that this video will be posted on, on, on YouTube and on, on all our networks so, so people can go through them and uh, go through it and, and, and you know, um uh hear what our panelists had to say about it i think it will be very useful for for everyone who is dealing uh, or interested in in, in uh, kosovo serbia issue um uh, i just wanted to say at at the end to, to invite all of the the, the attendees uh, to join us also for the for the next uh discussion is this series which is happening on, on wednesday at, at the same time uh, we have published in our networks the invitation and the link to join us uh, for this particular particular discussion uh, also i just wanted to, to thank all all of you in front of the center for social dialogue and regional initiatives uh to because we, you are a part of, of, of the, the project that we, we have been implementing uh, since the beginning of this year, we are coming to an end of the, the project, which, which is focused on the normalization process uh, between Serbia and Kosovo. We even published uh, a website um, uh, which, which tries to cover all the uh, things related to, to the normalization process. It's normalizacia.rs, but it's also available in English and in, in Albanian language. Uh, and also just a heads up, we are planning to uh, uh, publish a paper uh, next week or maybe the beginning of the week after, uh, which will be like a proposal or a guideline for the Serbian authorities, how to communicate uh, the normalization uh, between Serbian and Serbians and Albanians much better. We, so our goal is to contribute to the normalization of uh, relations between two, two nations. Uh, so uh, be aware of this, uh, follow our uh, uh, social media networks, our website and the Normalizacija website. We will be, we will be publishing that um, short guideline uh, very soon. And I, I think that it will be very interesting for, interesting for, you, for you all to, to, to see it and, and to read it. 
And once again, thank you, thank you all. Thanks to the new social initiative uh, from Kosovo, which is our partner in many other projects also. Uh, you're wonderful. And um, I hope to see you all soon. Ardit, back to you. Hmm. Again, I would like to uh, reinforce and highlight what ev everything Dusan has said. I encourage you all to be part of the next discussion as well, because it touches on another very sensitive issue that is currently being debated in Kosovo, and that is the potential for the implementation of the Association of Serb Municipalities. I think that will also feature a very in-depth discussion, and it also speaks to the larger implications of inter-ethnic harmony in Kosovo. And again, without further ado, I would again like to thank NSI, Dushan specifically, and everyone who made it here today, but especially the panelists for their time, but also the awesome insights. I will now kindly close this panel and hope to see you all again here on Wednesday. Thank you very much and have a very good day. Bye-bye.